Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Welcome to part three of the 60 over 350 build. And right now we're getting ready to uh, fit the rings. And with your application, depending on what you're setting your motor up for, that's what you're going to determine your ring gap factor with. And uh, oh, okay. Check that. Double check that. I did the wrong one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Four point zero six zero. Okay, we're right at it. Twenty eight. Now uh, the first cylinder checked out. So. Okay. Twenty eight. That's what it's at. So, um, there's all sorts of ways of squaring your piston rings in your cylinders. And there's tools, or you got flat top pistons, you can put a ring in the one piston. I mean, there's all sorts of ways. This is just what I've got that works for me. So, you just put, oops, get you guys down here. You just start your ring in there and then you. Taken. I don't know if this tool is really meant for a 60 over motor, but it works. So you got that in there. And the ring gap. Got a 10, 15, and a 3, that's 28 thousandths. And uh, looks like we're right, right there. Yep. Okay, they're all good. They're ready to go. So, what I want to do is get the... Uh, I, myself, only just check the top rings. But, uh, now, since the pistons aren't on the rod, I want to install the rings on the rods. On the rods. Jeepers, I can't talk today. I'm going to install the piston rings on the pistons. And we'll get this even sides done. And we'll get the... We'll just oh, what a day! It's been a day. We're going to install the rings on the piston, and then we're going to install the spiral locks, and then install the pistons and rods together, and get the driver side in here, and uh, start putting this motor together to stay together. So, all right, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I got one piston in. I'm uh, using different locks on these pistons, and I had to learn how I get them in myself. I just wasn't pulling enough. I'm using spiral locks instead of the little squeeze together snap rings on this set of pistons. And luckily, I did have a ring compressor that was a 60 over. Oh, well, first one, the rod was good and everything. Go to take the next rod out, and guess what? <laughs> they're still in the bags I know they claim the fame on these parts are they're supposed to be ready to use out of the box well when the wrist pins tight going through it's not ready I mean it's tight I it doesn't really move and uh, so now I gotta head up there and uh, have him hone those out he said he'd do those while I waited so I was like, ah, jeepers. I had a... And I guess dealing with the amount of stuff he does, I mean, and all the phone calls he gets, it's easy to do. It's easy to... It's simple. But uh, at the same time, though, for me, being in the middle of nowhere, and I guess next time, I now know to definitely check everything while we're there. But it was, it's been cold, it's been crappy, and we did, it just, so, another learn, uh, even though they're brand new, never used, 
I mean, I couldn't get that wrist pin halfway through the next rod. I mean, the bushing. And they're supposed to be ready to use, so. Um, that's where I keep saying, mass produced stuff. It should be, but. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I got, I am getting a little system down, and I'm going to also show you too. Look how far down that ring is. The further down the ring it is, even though it's a flat top, the further down the ring is, the less compression you got. And there was one motor that I used that looked like a semi-dished piston, but the thing about it is, that piston is going to produce more than the flat top. And another motor because it had a semi dish but the ring was moved further up which makes more compression even though it looks like it should be a less compression piston it actually is a higher compression piston than the flat top piston that I've got right here yeah oh flat tops okay we're good to go but depending on where your top compression ring is that determining is also another determining factor in your compression ratio so that's why that one weekend motor I built that I've still got for sale uh, runs so good because it actually has more compression than a flat top. So, uh, and I need to find another set of those pistons again. I've been going back through the videos trying to see if I can find the part number off those. No such luck. I didn't luck out there. So, I guess. I want to clean up my hands and check a few emails and go to the machine shop and get those uh, finished toned so I can install the, the pistons in the rear. <laughs> yeah. This is a motor video. There might be another video. Just have to stay tuned. Okay. Don't seem like long for you guys, but it's been about two hours. The drive time up, then sit there and let him do them, and get back. Yeah, it's time flies. Anyway, since I've got my tapered ring compressor, which is working, I got my rings clocked. Now this one here, being 180 across from one another. The oil ring control rings clocked. So now I put some. Uh, Right, lift them there, there, and there. And smear it all over the piston. Rings. By using stuff like this too, you also keep from having dry cylinders where you got to squirt oil in them to get compression to get them to fire. So, drop everything into here. Cylinder. Push it down. Now on another one that I used to use, you used to see me tap on this. Well, this one doesn't need that, so make sure you're square. See your crank down. And again, just like anything else, if it all of a sudden stops, you got to take it out see what happens so I put my hand down on it and just like that if it would have hung up on a ring you would have known it so I got the rod protectors on just line that up there's them make sure the burning tank was the outside Yes, I did look again just to make sure. I don't hurt to double check. And like I said, I'm going to torque all these and put the ARP assembly uh, lube on the bolts and everything. So all the crank clearances now have been measured off before. I just didn't. 
I've got other videos out there that show doing all that detail. And to get my hands on a broad bolt stretch gauge but one of these days. It turns over very nice. Oh, let me wet my hands and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here with that, that compression ring in further down in the cylinder. Okay, see that lip right there? That's where the top ring stops coming to. So that's a good 3 8 of an inch down in the hole. So that all factors into your compression ratio too. Even though the piston's there, that still factors into your compression ratio. But also the higher up the ring is, the more gap you need because you're putting it in the hot spot of the cylinder. So, yeah. So far, using the setup, I had the settings I have, it's gone good. So, anyway, uh, I gotta go break two more rods apart. I got my rod vise over there, and when I keep looking at it, every once in a while, I get a gust of cold air right here, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, building's going on 20 years old. 2000, yeah, 20 years old already. It's amazing. So, I don't think I was going to get 20 years of use out of this place. But anyway, I guess uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to, uh, so that don't get so messy. Get this wiped off. I'll do this well, six more times and I'll have a rotating an assembly. Um, main thing here is make sure you use your rod bolt protectors so you're uh, not nicking your crank because they also do double duty if you put them in there correctly this way on the rod bolts that will also help hold your bearing in so when you tap it you don't hear a ka-ching as your bearing goes bouncing across the floor. So. That's where that's at. Uh, like I said, I checked all the ring gaps. Everything's fine, so we're just assembling this thing together. And then, like I said, after I got all the rods in, then I'll check the side clearances. That's one reason I'm not torquing everything yet. I want to check the side clearances on the rods, make sure there's enough. I really hope there is because I really have to hate to have to pull them out and take the pistons off. But uh, so far, with the parts I'm using, they've been right on. So I guess I'm going to do some more, and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, got the heater going again. Start getting cool in here. Uh, hopefully this will go right on. You know how things go when you. I'm going to show it. I'm going to do a spiral lock here. There's an actual tool kit out there, but it's like three to four hundred dollars to do this. as you turn on the camera. Really? <laughs> Thought I had it pretty
pretty slick going because uh, Outside. That's on the old school stuff. The new stuff you kind of got to watch because you got to watch for bevel edges and all that. Well, you do on this, but uh, I think on the LS it kind of goes backwards from what we're used to. one of those rod breakers but there's just enough on that chair takes a little bit since he washed these I'm washing off wiping off the rest of the solvent I 
nice enough to do those right away. Then I got this one, brand new towel, wipe off grains. that. In the last set I did because these are the spiral, but the spiral is going to be a better lock system. this step otherwise it's going to be hard on them. Okay. Top of the piston there. Hold it to the corner of the block, burn your tank outside. There you go. And then it just slides together that like that. So just one more time. Repeat. Make sure the rings are clocked. Dropper in again. Wipe off the X's and I'll turn you guys. Just 
just like that. Then we're down to one. One more piston to do and we'll uh, have a short block here. short block form so a full cycle of doing these so I got the one left oh yeah I got to turn it over still turns over about this right and uh, get this last one in but, yep all the pistons have gone in nicely no hang-ups no nothing you just seen. But, there. All right, I'm going to do that last one, and then we'll. I'll be back. All righty, it's gotten late. I've had a few phone calls and stuff. Heck, I. <laughs> Got that up. We got top dead center right now. Uh, everything's looking good. So we got the short block assembled now. Uh, <laughs> trying to finish this up here for you guys. Had a few phone calls and that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So we find after this block being around here for a long time, it's finally now got some pistons back in it. Uh, so I don't lose track of this little guy here before I knock it on the floor and lose it. I got brass ones to put in there too if I really wanted to, but. <laughs> really? Uh, okay. There. Okay, that's there. So. But yeah, so that's two valve relief pistons. And uh, she's looking good. Uh, like I said, the crank clearances were checked already before. And. We're now ready to roll this thing over, torque everything up, and uh, be good to go. So, <laughs> kind of get a little spacey here. It's getting late at night, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> On top of everything, we've been without water for two days. But this cold snap, it finally froze up in town. So, kind of bite. So, uh, yeah, so everything is looking good. Now we got to get everything torqued up. I'm going to have to get the... I had to dig around and find the time and chain and gears that I'm going to put in this. And uh, that will be good to go. So, yep. I mean, a lot of guys just put a little oil on their pistons. I mean... I use the white lithium grease. I've done that on hundreds of motors and no problems. So, 
we all got our different ways of doing things, and uh, some agree, some don't. And the end result will be the same. It's going to run, and it's going to run hard. So, I guess I'll get the bag there and get this thing bagged up for the night. And we'll get the hell it's going to be. I don't know what's going to go on tomorrow. Friday's going to be pretty much shot because I got to babysit grandkids, which that's okay, but uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then I got some running to do, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. So, anyway, with that, guys, gals, everybody, thank you for watching this. I hope you guys are enjoying these series. And we got a few motors coming up. That's going to be more and it's just taking time it's all we can do is take time so anyway see you in the next one